Today on Dylan Talks Tone, we're gonna to talk about shielding, a continuation of last week's two-part series. Why I am standing outside a television station to talk to you about shielding. I want to just capture a concept here, okay? Now I know that all of the technology does not perfectly cross over. Of course we've got sirens because when I'm shooting a video outside, we either have wind or we have sirens. So I wanna point your attention to the satellite dishes. You see over there, you've got the satellite dish and in the middle of it, there's that little dude in the middle. That is called a low noise block amplifier. And basically what that does is it takes the very high frequencies that are very weak by the time they get to the satellite dish, okay? Those hit the satellite dish and the satellite dish directs them back up towards the LNB, the low noise block. And then there's, for lack of a better term, a simplistic term, there is a frequency funnel inside the LNB and it funnels in that those radio frequencies and then it does some things with the phase and it changes those frequencies to frequencies that it can use and then it sends it to the cable uh, and it turns into television picture way on down the line but the concept I want you to take from this right here is the fact that that big dish okay is taking very weak radio frequencies and pointing it towards that amplifier okay it's actually a pickup and then an amplifier. There's actually two pieces in there. Can you see where I'm going with this? Okay, let's go back and talk about guitars. Okay. So to understand shielding on a guitar, there's a couple of concepts that we gotta get our heads around. One, we wanna talk about what's not gonna work and what is gonna work. And we're gonna jump straight into Faraday cages because everybody thinks that you're supposed to create this like fortress of impermeability around your pickups and all of your wiring on your guitar with a bunch of copper shielding or you know whatever and it has to be a faraday cage to work in theory it would work absolutely to completely encase your guitar in copper and then you wouldn't have any noise that's how computer rooms server rooms that's how transmitters even in a in smaller environments, that's how they build those rooms to keep out electromagnetic interference. The problem is, is that it's, in order for it to work, there has to be a couple of things happen. One is that the item that you're trying to shield from the interference needs to be completely enclosed in said Faraday cage. It can't be sticking out, okay? So the minute the pickup is sticking out of this hole, it's not a Faraday cage anymore because the actual antenna for the thing, the pickup, is sticking out of the hole. So you can't en enclose it. So automatically it is not a Faraday cage. And on a guitar, at least in the conventional designs that we know now, will never be a Faraday cage because the actual thing you're trying to shield sticks out. Just doesn't even max make sense. Uh, the other thing that makes it kind of not apply to a guitar is we have to understand what a Faraday cage does. Basically what it does is, or a shield of any sort, um, but the difference between a Faraday cage and a shield, that, I guess that's the main thing. A Faraday cage, what it's supposed to do basically is take the energy of the, field, of the electromagnetic field that comes and hits it and it disperses it into eddy currents. You've probably heard this term in other parts of guitar like pickup covers and stuff. But basically what it does is it takes it and it disperses that energy into eddy currents, spreads it across the Faraday cage so that it does not permeate the Faraday cage, go through it and reach whatever you're trying to shield inside the Faraday cage, okay? That's how a Faraday cage works. It's based on two principles. One, the holes in the Faraday cage, you, all, it, you always see them and they're like a mesh of some sort. 
the holes in the Faraday cage have to be smaller than the wavelength of the wave that it is trying to stop, okay? So 60 hertz wave is 17 and a half feet long, so the hole has to be smaller than that to stop it. The other thing though that it has to, the other criteria that it has to satisfy is that the skin effect of the material, technical term, but basically what that means is the ability for that material to attenuate the signal that comes through it. So you have this frequency that's gonna hit it, and as we know, frequencies can go through stuff. Walls, concrete walls, drywall, whatever. It has an ability to permeate it, uh, to permeate it, but every time it goes through that, it attenuates it a little bit. It like loses a little, right? It loses a little strength. In order to attenuate 100%, get rid of, block, completely stop a frequency, the permeability of the material, in this case copper or aluminum, which is very similar for our purposes, the, the math is very similar, there is a formula that says if the frequency is coming in it is this frequency, 50 hertz or 60 hertz, in order to attenuate that signal to zero and not have it come out the other side, copper needs to be a particular thickness. And here is the math for that. There is actual math, I'm not making this up. In order for copper to 100% attenuate, 50 or 60 hertz hum, it's near as makes no difference, it's the same because it's so, so close together across the, what's possible. You would need to have copper 10 millimeters thick in order to completely attenuate 50 or 60 hertz hum. It would have to be in a complete cage and the pickup would not be able to stick out of it for it to function as a Faraday cage. That's why the term Faraday cage in a guitar is dumb because it doesn't apply. What's funny about guitar stuff is that 90% of the time, all these things that we see in other industries and other applications, we just say, oh, I'm just gonna apply it to a guitar. But in a guitar, it's not practical to apply it. So, let's go back now to the satellite dish. There's a difference between a shield and a Faraday cage. A Faraday cage and a guitar is not practical. A shield is. So now, let's take this pick guard and create a shield with it. We know that the pickup's gonna be sticking out of it. We know that it's going to be picking up electromagnetic interference. But it won't be very loud right here. The, amp the amplitude the, and the intensity of that frequency will not be very loud as it hits the pickup. Just like satellite signals won't be very intense by the time they hit the satellite dish. So what we do is we take a copper foil, we put it on the back side of our pick guard, and you can put it all around in your pickup cavity if you want, uh, but it won't function as a Faraday cage. It'll function as a shield and what will happen then is as we ground this, it must be grounded, okay? The electromagnetic interference then hits the whole thing, not just the pickup. It attenuates some of it, not all of it, and it bleeds it off the ground instead of going in the pickup and then being amplified by your amplifier. Will it work 100%? No. Just because you put shielding on your guitar doesn't mean that all the noise is gonna go away, number one, and it also doesn't mean that it's gonna be the same in any, every circumstance because the intensity of the 50 hertz hum in your environment may be different than in mine. The amount of 50 or 60 hertz hum or all of this interference may be different um, from different sources, different distances, different amplitudes, everything might be totally different. So you could get in a Facebook group and one person will say, I shielded my guitar and it didn't do anything. Shielding is dumb. And then another person will say, I shielded it and my guitar is 100% quiet. That's because environments are different and that's because all we have to work with is not optimal. If you wanna put one centimeter thick of copper on the back side of your pickguard, have it sit up this high, have it weigh a ton, and then somehow put your pickup inside there so it doesn't stick out, but then it really wouldn't work because then you wouldn't be able to pick up the strings, then yeah, you could shield the pickup, but it's not practical. So we have to kind of go with a compromise of foil, 
grounded. That signal gets bled from the foil to the pickguard, or from the foil to the ground in the guitar, away from the pickups as much as possible. It won't be optimal. What about all the people that say, make sure you shield all of this in here? Now you remember the you know, control cavity and stuff. Do you remember in our last video, we talked about the fact that the wires in here are not an effective antenna. Most of the noise that you're gonna get in your guitar is gonna come from your pickups. It's not gonna come from the wires over here. The reason I bring this up is because the number one phone call as a pickup builder that I get, I don't get them very often, but when I do get them, they are always this. I wired my guitar and all of a sudden it doesn't work. Something's wrong with your pickup. Something's wrong with the switch. Something's wrong with whatever. And the very first question I ask them is, do you have shielding in the control cavity of your guitar? <clears throat> and they say, yeah, because I wanted a Faraday cage. First of all, it's not necessary, number one. Uh, second of all, rip it out. And they'll say, why? Because something's touching it's not supposed to touch. And it's shorting out the wiring. Rip it out, everything works. The guitar isn't any louder. It's not any noisier. There is le there's no more stuff going on in there than was previously there. So, why would you shield your control cavity? The only time you would do this, I guess, is the whole concept of how shielding would work on a guitar it really is to have as many square inches as possible. Now, what would be really cool is if you could have like the whole top of your guitar copper. Now, I've, I've actually built guitars where the whole top of the guitar was aluminum and they were super quiet because you had this humongous satellite dish bleeding all the noise off the ground and it was amazing. So the, the ultimate amount of square inches that you could have of copper on your guitar would be killer, but it's just not practical. So there could be times, I suppose, where you could have a situation where you wanted to like shield your entire cavity because you just wanted the square inches to have the most satellite dish possible. Uh, when you do this whole shielding thing, uh, I'm gonna show you a couple of things that you should and should not do to make sure that you don't have problems and it's as effective as possible. I personally like to use copper shielding foil tape, okay? Um, this is on Amazon. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Uh, you see this huge roll? This is like half gone. I think it was only like 12 bucks. Um, the stuff you buy from Stumac, the stuff you buy from all of these places is really expensive in my opinion for no reason. Um, that being said, there's a couple of things you need to know. One, make sure it's copper. Two, make sure that the tape, the sticky stuff on the other side is conductive. Here's why. When we shield a uh, when we shield a control or a uh, pick guard, we're gonna put the tape on there like this, right? It doesn't matter that it's a little crinkly because when you put it on, you're gonna be able to smooth it out. I'll show you. See, and then you can press down on the sides, and then later be able to trim around the outside really easy. Okay. So here's the key. We're gonna put another piece on here, and this glue on the tape that I use, co the copper foil tape that I use, is conductive. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to make sure that it overlaps just a little bit so that when you put a, a meter on here that you have continuity from one side to the other. Okay, because if, if this isn't overlapped just a little bit and the glue needs to be conductive, uh, then the shielding won't work. Shielding for it to work needs to be continuous over a largest surface as possible with no breaks and be, have continuity. The number, other number one thing you need to do is also make sure that the ground is hooked to it. If it is not grounded, it is not a shield. It is just copper on the back of a pick guard. On a, on a telly, I'll show you what I like to do. I take a strip of copper, like this, just a little strip of copper, and I put it on the front, over the front screw hole, 
okay, like so, of the control cavity. I put over the front of the screw hole like that, and then down like this, okay? And then, when your pick guard goes on, of course it's over the copper, it touches the copper there, and then when you put the screw through and the, the metal control cavity plate is over the top of this, then now you have con continuity from your pick guard shield to the control plate on your, on your telly. Because of that little strip right there, it, you shield the thing from one end to the other and it's all connected and then it's grounded. On every guitar, you're gonna have to think this through, how do I connect all of my shielding together, okay? Now a lot of people will do goofy things like put a dot of solder on all the seams and that sort of stuff. It's not really necessary if you get the right kind of tape, okay? And then the other thing I was gonna say is this is where the biggest problem on a telly is. People wanna shield inside this little hole right here. Don't do that. It's just gonna cause you problems and it's not gonna do a thing. It is not gonna make any difference in how quiet or loud your guitar is or how loud the noise is. Um, on a telly, if you wanted to, you could probably shield the sides of this, but again, it won't really do anything and it will just cause you problems if you do it wrong. I mean, it just ends up being a pain. Now, what about shielding paint? I'm not a fan because it's messy. I'm not a fan of anything that I have to clean up after myself when this stuff is super nice, super neat, and cheap. And it works awesome. And I 100% I know that it's there. And uh, the shielding paint, if you don't mix it up right, and all the goo stays in the bottom, it doesn't work very well, all kinds of problems. I don't like it. I'm not a fan. I like using copper foil. Let us know in the comments what you use, uh, because everybody uses something a little bit different. And there you go, that's shielding a guitar. Um, one correction I wanna to make to last week's video, because people seem to get in these comments and you're wrong, you're wrong. Well, here's the thing. In these sorts of really technical videos, um, where there is science and where there is math, a lot of times I try to simplify it down and the, some engineer is gonna get in this video and say, you said it wrong, you're oversimplifying it, you missed a big detail, blah, 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 blah. Well, we try to be as thorough as possible. The problem is, is that if you're super thorough, I mean, I could show you the calculus if you want. I mean, we, I can give you all the formulas. I know where we can do it, it's easy. And actually you could Google it and find it in five minutes. It's not that hard um, to figure out the thickness of shielding and why a Faraday cage doesn't work in a guitar. That's all super easy science. It's, you can, it's super easy to find it. The problem is that if you get super into the weeds on this stuff, then people don't really understand it and don't understand the practical application to the guitar. This is not an engineering video. This is how to most effectively do this to solve a problem. That's what this is. And so um, the last week, we talked about the movement of electrons for radio waves, which isn't 100% totally accurate. And so I'll give you a correction on this now. I, I was wrong on that. It's not I was wrong it's actually the photons on the electrons. See what I mean? Like we could get really, really, really stupid about this. And everybody was like, electrons is lightning. It would be lightning. And I'm like, come on, man. It's the photon motion. I don't even want to get into it. That is as much of a correction as you're going to get. Like I used the wrong term, but it's not necessarily the wrong term. It's just zoomed out. Like we got to zoom out a little bit simplify this a little bit and just concentrate on the end result for what we're trying to do and it be as technically as accurate as possible but at the same time keep it as simple as possible for uh, those of you that don't care and just want to know what to do conductive tape conductive glue on the back of copper foil stick it on the back of your pick guard screw it on your guitar it'll be as quiet as possible you don't need to waste the time with a faraday cage you don't need to waste your time with shielding paint this is cheap You'll find it on Amazon, the link is below, done deal. The video could have been that long, but then all of a sudden people get in the comments and you know, so whatever. Anyway, that's it, man. Go shield your telly. That's what I'm gonna do. Uh, DylanContest.com, make sure 
you go and enter to win that guitar because that is coming up, I think, in nine days or something. I think we're giving that thing away like the end of next week. Uh, super, super stoked to do that. Um, and check out our live show on Thursday. Check out Patreon. We have been uploading content to Patreon every day. Uh, my goal for 2020 is to make sure that I give my 2021, <laughs> that I give my viewers over on Patreon, especially, and the ones that have added, you know, added themselves as members, the join button, get content more consistently and I give you enough value to make it worth it for you. And so that is like, I am on that. So check out Patreon, check out the join button for the membership on the YouTube thing below. We're about to schedule our first uh, members only live stream hangout thing. So anyway, thanks for hanging out and we'll see you soon.